Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So we are doing this series of videos uh, where I'm doing most repeated topics in CSINET exam and I have already made video for inorganic chemistry and organic chemistry topics. So here in this video, I'm going to talk about the topics which has been asked in CSINET exam in repetitive time uh, from physical chemistry portion of your syllabus. Now, again, I just want to give a disclaimer that whatever topics I'm including in these videos, that does not mean that these are the only topics from where you are going to expect a question in exam. This is just a kind of data analysis. That's what you can say. So I'm just going to discuss or I'm just discussing those topics which has been asked multiple number of times in the exam. Now, why these videos are useful or how you can use this video. So actually, when you are preparing for the exam and when you are revising the concept and when you decide that which topic I have to, you know, revise and which topics I don't have to revise before exam. So these, this video will make, uh, will help you to make that judgment and you should be aware about that. Okay. If let's say if you are studying uh, physical chemistry and you were about to leave uh, quantum chemistry completely, then there are certain topics which I'm going to discuss in this video. So you can at least cover those topics which can give you some marks. Okay. And same goes for other topics as well. So this is how you can, you know, include some more topics when you are preparing some extra topic from a particular concept which you are leaving completely for the exam. Uh, again, I'm telling that this does not mean that the exam in the exam you should you will only get questions from here. Okay, nobody can predict that. Okay, I'm just telling you based upon previous records, based upon the previous 10 years, previous 12 years of CSINET, and how the questions are asked from which portion of the syllabus it is asked. All right. So now, since I have given the disclaimer, because I got some comments related to that, that's why I'm making this disclaimer very clear. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about the topics. So I'll start from solid state chemistry. This is the shortest, smallest, cutest chapter of physical chemistry. So when you start from solid state, you should actually, there are some basics which you should know. I mean, you should know how to find out, uh, you know, uh, the number of atoms per unit cell, uh, then how many atoms do you get number of atoms per unit cell in the case of B, uh, BCC, FCC. So I have not included that, uh, but yeah, you should know them. These are all the basic things, very basic things. Okay. So you should know about them. Like, for example, in, in simple cubic, you are going to get one atom per unit cell. In body centered cubic, you are going to get two atoms per unit cell. In phase centered cubic, you should get four atoms per unit cell. And what is the packing fraction of them and all the things related to that. Okay. Apart from that, a question which from which uh, from the topic from which you will get a repetitive question is from the density. Okay, now density question is not asked alone. It, they are not only just going to ask you to calculate density. In the density question itself, these things which I have discussed, right, the number of atoms per unit cell, then the packing fraction concept, uh, then the uh, A to R ratio, that means edge length to the uh, cation radius or the radius of the cation uh, or the radius of the atom ratio. So a to R ratio for different systems of uh, like arrangement of atoms that will be used to solve density related questions. I have done multiple number of questions on solid state on this chapter itself. Just uh, in the search bar of YouTube, just search solid state and the name of our chapter, uh, sorry, the name of our channel that is all about chemistry and you will definitely get a lot of videos in that. Okay. So just search this and you will get all the videos related to solid state and uh, like i have solved multiple number of questions so in case if you are someone who who does not know how to solve question if you just watch those videos at least you will get some idea of solving questions from density then the most important equation which is actually an important equation for all the material chemists for the research point of view as well that is bragg's equation so from the bragg's equation uh, general questions are asked based upon wavelength atomic radii unit cell like length of the unit cell then spacing between the planes again see all these topics are interconnected these are connected to the number of atoms per unit cell this is connected to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the understanding of how the atoms are arranged in a particular unit cell so you should know about all those things to solve such questions then the calculation of angle okay between the two planes uh, then sin theta cos theta basically sin theta cos theta means you, you don't directly calculate in the Bragg's equation you get that sine theta equation then angle between the plane when you see then there you get the cos theta equation okay so you should be aware about how to solve those questions then allowed and forbidden diffractions in BCC FCC and SCC so based upon the Miller indices you should be able to know that which Miller indices are going to fall in BCC which are going to fall in FCC which are going to fall in uh, simple cubic so this is like kind of trick which you can use 
to solve such questions but yeah, it's not difficult it's a very easy topic and uh, if you are someone who has not at all studied solid state if you are going to do these much this much topic uh, at least you should be able to do question which will be asked in exam all right fine let's go to chemical kinetics now so in the chemical kinetics of course basic concepts basic concepts include your rate of reaction rate constant related equations and all in your syllabus you have zeroth order first order and second order kinetics you also have third order kinetics but yeah uh, the numericals are generally asked from zero first and second order third order has been just once or twice asked so it's not that repetitively asked but yeah you should know a general equation of calculating for the nth order again one more thing is there that uh, the unit of rate constant is also something which you should know solid state approximation is something which is highly important topic so you should be aware about that michaelis menten equation whole enzyme kinetics depends upon that not only michaelis menten equation but line weaver work plot is there eddy hofsey plot is there so you should know about all these things uh, when i write michaelis menten equation michaelis menten has been asked repetitive time it does not mean that uh, uh, line weaver work will not be asked so line weaver work is like x uh, reduced form or the changed form of michaelis menten right if you have studied you know that so yeah if you are doing michaelis menten do line weaver work as well then kinetics of unimolecular reactions where you study lindemann theory of unimolecular reaction and how to write down the equations and how to solve those questions those are challenging ones and those are like they they give you good marks also they will be asked for four marks then collision theory and activated state theory questions related to that some theories related to that like Ehring's equation is there you should be aware about those things then kinetics of complex reactions including parallel reaction consecutive reaction reversible reaction these are certain topics see chemical kinetics is one of the topic which is which has a reasonable weightage and it's not that vast i would say there are plenty of things to study of course the chemical kinetics chapter can be can be divided in three parts part one has just the basic concepts arrhenius equation okay why i'm forgetting arrhenius equation yes arrhenius equation is also there okay so just include that as well the basic concept and Arrhenius equation makes the first part. The second part is your enzyme kinetics in which Michael is maintained, uh, line weaver work plot and all those things comes in. And then the third part where you study activated complex theory or collision theory where you study uh, the kinetics of unimolecular reactions and the complex reactions as well. By the way, I just want to make an announcement here that we have our own batches running exclusively for physical chemistry so if you are someone who is having trouble in studying physical chemistry if you are someone who is like who wants to study physical chemistry from me then you can join our batches and new batch is going to launch very soon i'll be making that announcement very soon on this particular channel so stay tuned for that but yeah that will be for the next csi net exam but yeah i, I just want to make that announcement here so yeah i have completed all these like i have covered all these topics in my lectures over there and yeah if you have joined my classes i don't think you will be having any difficulty in understanding these concepts moving ahead to electrochemistry again one of the topic which is a little tricky but uh, is a good re rewarding chapter so here you study about molar conductivity and the basics of conductivity related equations then you have nurse equation most famous most important equation of electrochemistry i would say that if you do nurse equation and if you are able to solve questions from nurse equation you are definitely going to get one question in your csi net exam and definitely okay so this is one of the most important that's why i'm making star over here so nurse equation you should never forget or you should never leave if you are preparing electrochemistry de Beherkel limiting law sometimes it is asked sometimes it is not but yeah it's an important equation paul ross law again is an easy and important equation then there is a uh, like calculation or numericals based upon delta g calculation ksp uh, solubility product and equilibrium constant calculation thermodynamics expert of delta g delta h and delta s that means how these uh, like thermodynamic quantities they are related to the electrochem like the, the emf of the cell how they are related the equations relating them that is what is being asked generally then you have concentration cells with liquid junction and without liquid junction or uh, yeah so th that also you have to cover if you are preparing complete electrochemistry then potentiometric titrations are sometimes asked they are they generally come in an analytical part but yeah if you are preparing for uh, the csi net exam and if you are preparing physical chemistry completely and if electrochemistry is something which on which you are focusing more upon so yeah potentiometric titration also you can do but i would not say that this is super important because it's not uh, that much repetitive sometimes you can expect 
sometimes you can ignore it as well okay because this is a big topic and the question which you will get will be usually of two marks then the question based upon transport number and mobility again these are super simple questions you just need to understand the basic idea about that uh, calculating the ionic strength and related equations related uh, calculations these are generally four marks or two marker questions so yeah again this is important all right let's go to the polymer chemistry so polymer chemistry if you don't want to study complete polymer chemistry at least you should do these topics calculation of mw uh, that is weight average molecular mass number average molecular mass and viscosity average molecular mass and degree of polymerization and the fraction of polymer consumed so there are some equations some formula which you should know there are a lot of things which can be covered in polymer chemistry but at least if you are not studying the other things just try to you know remember the formula of these and if the question comes in exam at least you can give the shot to that okay Coming to surface chemistry, surface chemistry is again a short topic, but it is again a rewarding topic because you will get questions from here. So Langmuir adsorption isotherm is an important topic from where you will definitely get a question. Gibbs adsorption isotherms is like earlier it was not used to be asked, but in the recent exams I have found that Gibbs and BET both are, they have started asking in an indirect manner. So you should be aware about that. Critical micellar concentration or CMC based or surface tension based questions are also asked. So I have made a detailed video on it. You can just watch that video. And again, you just have to search critical micellar concentration or CMC and my channel name that is all about chemistry and you will get that video. Okay. So that's uh, like that has a good uh, viewership on that video. And it's like I have I have compiled everything in a single video. So it will give you a value for that sake so in let's say 15 20 minutes you will be aware about what critical micellar concentration is and if the graph related questions are asked from there it will be easy for you to do an exam all right okay moving ahead to the bigger topic which is thermodynamics now again thermodynamics is a big topic a lot of lot of lot of things in thermodynamics there are a lot of types of questions that can be asked and if you are a physical chemist if you are someone who is preparing physical chemistry then of course you should do complete thermodynamics because it is a high weightage topic but Again, some topics which are important, again, see, um, like I tried to keep as simple or as less topics as possible, but still I couldn't uh, decrease the number of topics than nine. So yeah, there are nine of them. So thermodynamic equation of state is something from where you will generally get a question. There are two thermodynamic equation of state. You should know both of them, all right? And uh, you should know how to uh, like uh, use that equation. Uh, what are the units of the left hand side and the right hand side which quantity has what unit generally questions are asked from there then you have maxwell relations this has a pretty simple trick and i have made a video in which you can find out you can form 16 equations of thermodynamics just by watching that trick video so again that video i'll give you a link in the description of this video also i'll try to pin up in the i button over here so yeah you can watch that video then entropy of mixing generally question are asked from the from this particular concept entropy of mixing and residual entropy although residual entropy goes in statistical thermodynamics but yet you you might get a question from entropy of mixing there are two equations of that uh, relating to cp and cv and like you should remember those equations carnot cycle is again an important topic uh, and uh, calculating efficiency calculating the value of temperature of the sink and the source and you know relating them to each other that's what carnot cycle does or carnot equation does so you should know about that Heat capacity is again an important topic, CP, CV relationship between them, how a CP and CV relationship for real gases because in general uh, like if you will see previous few exams they have started asking questions for heat capacities, CP and CV values or CP and CV relationship for real gases not for ideal gases because for ideal gas Mayer's law is followed CP minus CV is equals to R pretty simple but there are other uh, forms of CP minus CV for, for the real gases and uh, that's what you have to look upon so there are five or six major equations i have made a whole playlist on thermodynamics i have explained thermodynamics in detail on this particular channel so i would recommend you to watch at least that if you want to prepare thermodynamics i have covered all these topics in detail over there i think there are seven or eight uh, parts of that video if i am a part of that playlist if i'm not wrong but yeah, i have tried to cover everything from thermodynamics so that you understand everything at least from the exam point of view okay 
Coming to the next thing which is clausius clapeyron equation. This topic is or this equation is so important that a whole new chapter comes from here that is phase equilibria that basically revolves around clausius clapeyron equation. So how the clausius clapeyron equation, what's the slope of that when you are going to get a positive slope, negative slope, basically phase equilibria related questions can be asked from clausius clapeyron equation. So again, phase equilibria is also important topic and you should know about uh, like single component systems. Uh, two component system for single component system at least you should know about water system and uh, carbon dioxide system what is the difference between them what's the exceptional case in water why the slope why the melting slope of water is negative so these type of general questions for two marks are asked from here okay next let's go to the joule thomson coefficient this is again an important topic from joule thomson coefficient you will get equations and uh, like new terms like inversion temperature critical pressure so all those things you should know how the and how these equations are related to the uh, to the gas constant like a and b so try to look upon them when i'm telling you all these things you should know open up your notes or open up your books or just google it up okay just google it up about these topics and you will get the important equations make a note of them and at least if you do that much if you are not preparing thermodynamics at all but if you are just re, re, like if you just remember those equations and if you it in the exam and if a direct question is asked probably you will be able to do it okay so these are important topics please pay attention to them then criteria for spontaneity again in my trick video where i have discussed about this maxwell relation i guess i have discussed about the trick to find out the criteria for spontaneity it's very simple it's pretty simple and you all can do that it just requires a thermodynamic square i just i'll just explain that in short so you just have to remember that uh, uh, you have to write down S P V T, where S is entropy, P is pressure, V is volume, T is temperature, and then you have to write down H U G and A. Okay, so this is called as thermodynamics extended square, and I have discussed about this in my video uh, on Maxwell relation, which I uh, I was talking about the trick video. So now, if you want to write down the uh, the condition for spontaneity, so that's pretty simple. All you have to do is uh, if you are writing uh, this particular thing if you are writing with respect to v uh, sorry with respect to u so the the condition for spontaneity is that del u uh, del u or change in entropy at constant s and constant v should be less than or equal to zero it should be negative basically so how this does this s and v came that is because these are closer to u okay similarly if you want to write down for let's say h so you will write down that del h at constant what are closer to it s and p so s and p it should be less than or equal to zero so these are the conditions for spontaneity same goes for g for g it will be del g at constant p and t for a it will be del a at constant v and t okay i have discussed this i think in this video but but i just made sure that i just tell you in short so this is the trick how you find out condition for spontaneity fugacity is again an important topic uh but yeah if you are like it is not that repetitively asked but i would recommend you considering the exam pattern that you should know what fugacity is and do questions related to that moving ahead to the next topic which is a statistical thermodynamics a tricky topic many people just ignore it but it's not that difficult if you just do these six topics it's easy and at least you will be able to do one or two questions from this remember that now csir is giving more weightage to statistical thermodynamics than earlier earlier we used to just get one or two questions from statistical thermodynamics but nowadays you can easily see three or four questions from statistical thermodynamics so yeah it's an important topic now so thermodynamic probability is something which you have to cover probability in which you are going to see uh, like how to find out different number of ways or arrangements related equations okay then maxwell boltzmann distribution law comes over there then you have partition functions the definition and different types of partition function like translational partition function rotational partition function vibrational partition function and their equations then certain terms comes over there like thermal wavelength so what's the equation of that thermal wavelength how it is related to the translational partition function the relationship between them there was a question i think two times with that question has been asked and that's why i have included this topic over here ensemble related thing it's a pretty simple thing it's just a definition kind of thing there are three types of ensemble micro ensemble uh, canonical ensemble and grand canonical ensemble so you should know about them what are the things constant in them what are the things that are variable in them so yeah that is also something from where you can expect a two marker question 
Then there is a relationship between thermodynamic variables and partition function. That is something important. You should be aware about how thermodynamic variables or thermodynamic quantities are related to partition function. That means thermodynamic quantities like uh, internal energy, uh, then your Gibbs free energy, your entropy, how they are related to the partition function. That's there are certain equations, so you should remember them. Moving ahead to group theory, this is one of the most creative chapter in which you have to, you know visualize things visualize molecules and based upon that you have to solve so yeah point group is something which is definitely asked character table related questions are asked and on my channel i have taught group theory in detail you can find those videos and those are like having good viewership so those are highly viewed videos you can watch them and rely on them all the data all the information is given in a crisp and in, like in a manner that it won't take much time of yours and you will get a lot of value from there so yeah postulates of Great orthogonality theorem, reduction from reducible to irreducible representation, allowed forbidden electronic transitions, IR Raman and active modes, Raman active modes or IR active modes, how to find them. All these things I have explained in my videos. Please watch them and this group theory will be covered over there. I probably not have taught point group, but I have made a trick video for point group that how you can find out point group in three simple steps. So yeah, that video is highly essential. You should watch it before exam. All right. Moving ahead to the bigger chapter of uh, physical chemistry, that's quantum chemistry. Now, I know many of you, when you hear quantum chemistry, the first thing in your mind is maths and you don't want to do that. But believe me, there are many topics which are simple, easy and easy to approach. They are like not that difficult. For example, at least you can do commutator. You should know about certain concepts of Hermitian operator. They are super simple. You, it, it just looks difficult, but when you start understanding it or when you start finding out the pattern, it becomes very easy to understand. Okay, Egan value, Egan function related things, particle in 1D, 2D and 3D box. At least you can do these four and these four can easily fetch you two questions. Okay, At least two questions you can expect from these four. Then goes a little higher topics like perturbation theory variational principle all these videos i have made on my channel okay you will find out all these all difficult chapters all difficult topics of physical chemistry has been taught on my channel so you can find all these on this particular channel keep searching it and keep finding it i will give you a link of lot more in the description of this video so you can you know just follow them up then you have huckel theory again it's a easy topic uh, hydrogen atom problem of course this is something which i would not suggest a beginner to do it because uh, doing hydrogen atom problem is not that easy, but there are certain types of question that can be asked from hydrogen atom problem which you can do. For example, a wave function is given to you and you have to find out the n, l and m value. That means principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number and magnetic spin quantum number. So you can do that uh, easily just by looking into the wave function. That is something that is easy to be done and sometimes that question has been asked for 4 marks. If you are lucky enough, you get it for 4 marks and if you do it right, you get that okay so yeah you should do that question and i have made a video on that as well then you get questions on simple harmonic oscillator and then things related to chemical bonding where hybridization of a particular wave function is given and how much percentage of s character how much percentage of p character is there that related questions are asked or overlap integral is asked or uh, like uh, orthogonality related question normalization of wave functions those things comes in chemical bonding you should be able to do such questions all right, moving to the last topic of this particular video that is molecular spectroscopy. Molecular spectroscopy is kind of application part of thermo, uh, of your quantum chemistry, okay? Whatever you study in quantum chemistry, you apply that in the molecular level and that's where you get molecular spectroscopy. So there are three major or four major spectroscopy which you have to study, rotational spectroscopy under which you have to study spherical top molecules, symmetric top, asymmetric top molecule, what are the conditions for them, how you identify them, how you differentiate them. Then the questions based upon numericals based upon rotational constant, then uh, questions and numericals based upon rotational energy levels, J values, how and what are the selection rules which translational, which transitions are possible or which transitions are allowed, which are not allowed and uh, uh, if a transition is happening from a certain J value, what will be the energy difference? So yeah, you should be aware about such question. Then isotopic shift, these questions where you have, let's say hydrogen chloride and you have two isotopes of chlorine, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. So what will be the difference or what will be the value of the J levels or the energy levels of both of them? So how basically rotational constant depends 
moment upon moment of inertia and how moment of inertia depends upon reduced mass that's how this relation comes in okay so your rotational constant b is inversely proportional to moment of inertia and your moment of inertia is directly proportional to your reduced mass so you can say that b is inversely proportional to your reduced mass b is a uh, rotational constant by the way so this is how the relation comes in mu is reduced mass so if the isotope is changed the reduced mass is going to change and your rotational constant is also going to change so yeah certain numericals many times they have been asked in csi and exam based upon this concept next talking about vibrational spectroscopy so here anharmonic and harmonic rotors uh, like to find out anharmonicity constant or to find out uh, like omega e value or omega e x e value then to find out the dissociation energy okay that's also one of the concept to find out the dissociation energy concept so yeah certain numericals upon this has been asked in the previous exam they are super simple if you understand the concept numericals are not difficult you just need to understand the concept how and what's actually happening in vibrational spectroscopy i have i think i have explained them pretty well uh, on my you know, like batches where i teach physical chemistry in detail coming to the next part which is vibrational constant again just like rotational constant you have vibrational constant v and numericals related to that so yeah how the rotational constant values depends upon the reduced mass and uh, how the isotopic shift again how the isotopic shift is going to change the vibrational constant values and if the vibrational constant value is going to change then your uh, vibrational energy is also going to change okay because uh, the vibrational energy of the vth state is uh, v plus half h omega okay so you should be aware about that when the vibrational state is going to change the energy for the corresponding vibrational state is also going to change so yeah certain numericals and certain questions based upon this is asked you just need to understand the basic concept if you don't want to you know because you don't have much time if you if you're lagging behind the time and you don't want to invest that much time to understand the concept at least remember the formula and at least do some or watch some videos where questions has been solved from the previous years and if you get a similar question you have a high chance that you will be able to do that in exam right okay moving ahead to the next one that is raman spectroscopy this is this is something which I believe that every one of you, everyone who is watching it from India, you all should know because this is pride of our country. It is, it was given from our country, and that's why we should know each and everything about it. But yeah, it does not require much of physics to understand it. It is super simple. Just you need to know and you need to visualize what's exactly exactly is happening, what's the scattering of light, and how is it different from uh, absorption, which you have seen in the other two. I mean, rot rotational and vibrational. You see the absorption of light but here only the scattering is the effect but yeah let's come back to the topic so yeah uh, whether a molecule will be raman active or not that's first type of question which is asked then uh, stoke shift and anti-stoke shift the values of those are asked then uh, rotational raman spectroscopy is something there are many other things that can be asked but these three things at least are the one which has been asked multiple number of times rotational uh, there is vibrational raman spectroscopy as well but rotational raman spectroscopy has been asked multiple number of times okay and the last topic which is nmr spectroscopy so as i said that nmr spectroscopy i already included it in my organic chemistry video as well so nmr spectroscopy of course you get from the organic point of view you have to find out the structure of the molecule using the nmr data but in your molecular spectroscopy or in the physical spectroscopy NMR related numericals are asked in which you are given with certain wavelength of uh, or the frequency of the NMR instrument and uh, like the gyromagnetic ratio of the nuclei or at what frequency the nuclei spins or the chemical shift value and they ask numericals related to that. So there are just few formula and if you know them you should be able to do questions related to NMR spectroscopy as well. Again I have made video on all of these on my channel just check them out and study from there or cover these topics before exam comes or revise them at least before the exam so yeah that's all from my side for this particular video i just thought of see physical chemistry it's it, it is very difficult for me because i teach physical chemistry in very much detail so i just try to concise or try to only keep those topics which has been asked multiple number of times uh, there are many topics which are there uh, which i could have added but i just thought of making this video concise and uh, like reducing the number of topics so that it does not look like that i have included each and every topic from a uh, or each and every concept from a particular topic okay so i didn't wanted to do that the intent of this video was just to 
give you a brief idea that don't miss out these topics okay after the csnet exam when your new preparation or when when you will start preparing for when the next batch will come up probably you all will qualify i don't want any one of you to repeat it but yeah if uh, for the future time i will be making a detailed video where i'll be covering each and every topic and so that you have a list of them and you can make a tick of them when you are preparing or when you are having more time to prepare for the exam so you can you know cover each and every topic from for that so yeah for my side for this particular uh, video that's all and i'll be coming up with more interesting things for your upcoming exam and uh, do subscribe to the channel if you have not yet done that and give a like if you are liking this type of video and do let me know if you have any ideas or if you want me to make certain type of video or certain things to be included in the video do let me know in the comment section below and i will see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care keep preparing and all the best for your exam